let's see how that played out. This is kind of a complex graph, and I apologize for that, but it does tell a lot of interesting stories. The lighter blue color uh, really represents the whole winter average. So you can see that there's uh, here in a double poly house, uh, you can see uh, a um, you can see some of these these light blue, the most thermally resistive or could contain the heat the best is this foil face plastic right in here. And that worked really fairly well, but by far it was superior to the single poly high tunnel. The um, And then we also looked at the single five foot bed versus the multiple bed cover in the darker green. So what, what does this mean? We're, we're going to um, not look at those darker blue colors right now. So what this means is that uh, I interpreted it to mean that a single poly house over the whole winter really had a reduced effect on, it didn't help my temperature retention at all. And uh, going with the, one of the better plastics or the better spun polyesters, it, it really didn't matter. I also felt that the foil-faced bubble foam, although it bumped it up, when you look at it, bumped it up about four degrees on the average, the cost of that foil face bubble foam was so outrageous that it, it really became economically out of the question. Additionally, the plants didn't seem to grow well underneath it. I just didn't have the production that I, I really anticipated. And so I discounted that and really focused on comparing the Agrabon 70 and the uh, Agrabon 19 and then a regular piece of standard 6 mil IR plastic. The, when you look at this, uh, it's clear that you get a, the double wall, the six mil plastic is really pretty good for the price. And the Agrabon 19 less, plastic next, and then the spun polyester is better. It was also interesting that in the um, multiple bed cover, which is that key type with the center pathway and the uh, laterals where, where you can walk in down through there, that the, um, they were a little bit better in thermal performance than, and, than the other single uh, five foot beds. So we, we, what did we learn from this? we learned that you really needed a double wall poly in a zone six for sure. That the uh, multiple bed cover was much more effective than a single bed cover and that the fairly cheap and sometimes we can pull it off of our greenhouses when we change plastics or our, our high tunnels and use simply used plastic on the inside for inner covers and it, it really stacked up pretty good uh, against buying in other materials. Now all that said, uh, these inner covers were closed at night and open during the day. The blue lines, the darker blue lines were interesting because I've noted the, all these numbers are related to a value of zero outside. So they're, uh, in the case of the first column, it's about uh, 18 degrees above outside temperature. And what I was seeing is that in our, in southeastern Pennsylvania, the outside temperature could dip to well below zero uh, to Fahrenheit. But the lettuce continued to grow. We had a recorded low over 10 years that we uh, monitored that of 17 below. And yet, all through the winter, we had production. And the reason for that is partially told in these blue bars, which show that on the coldest nights, the five coldest nights, 
that there was a much greater difference uh, between the outside temperature at zero and the inside temperature of the um, whatever inner cover and combination of inner covers and tunnels we were looking at. So that was a significant uh, interest. Uh, I saw the results of, of crops growing, but I didn't know why it was doing that. The other thing, part of the puzzle of why uh, at such low temperatures were, and such a small gradient of temperature difference were we see in growth and not uh, you know, freeze damage was that at, at the combination of humidity, and the increase and decrease of temperature over uh, the evening and morning, we were seeing uh, what was termed by uh, one of the uh, professors at Purdue who deals in plant physiology, plant stress physiology, uh, was super chilling of the crystals. And that allowed everything to work uh, to our good to make it uh, make those cells membranes not rupture and we could move on with production. So a lot of the things I've learned, I've learned from production and then work backwards to figure out why they worked. And that's what this picture shows. Uh, we are in high tunnel production very much predicated by what nature gives us. And this is a colored sweet bells harvested the first full week in January in um, out of a, an unheated structure. Uh, that's the latest we had, that kind of a harvest earlier. The earliest we were cut off from production for bell peppers was Thanksgiving in the USDA zone 6. So let's look at what the inner covers are telling us here in the coastal plains, uh, zone 8. And I think this applies in, in zone 6 and beyond as well. Look at the photograph in the left hand side and you'll see some pak choy pretty close to re uh, and ready to harvest for a baby pak choy banded and ready for market. You look at the upper right hand and you see uh, the pak choy, which is in Taipar, which is a polypropylene cover uh, that's much smaller, much smaller than the plastic on the left, plastic inner cover. And then that bottom right photo is uh, the picture with no inner cover. Now all those were planted out of the same flat on the same day in the same high tunnel. Quite dramatic and we can see the effects of inner tunnels and production. Again, a same scenario of same cover, uh, same high tunnel, same um, dates of planting or seeding in this case. Six mil plastic on the top, tie par uh, in the middle, and no cover. Let's look at a graph, a bar graph of the number of days to first harvest for the average of the cut greens. On the, the left three bars is in a warm high tunnel with no cover. The right three bars are in a cool high tunnel with, uh, with various covers. Um, apologize for the uh, legend at the bottom being scrunched in, in transmission to the web. But the bar on, <coughs> you can see quickly how the first three bars had a double poly roof. The second three bars had a single poly roof. And so the question I asked in, in North Carolina here was, can I compensate for a, uh, not having two coverings on the greenhouse or high tunnel frame by having inner covers? And you can see on the right three bars that I can approach that, uh, but I still can't attain the maximum growth, which was about 26 days on the left-hand bar by uh, having a double wall roof in the hoop house and plastic inner cover. 
In terms of days to harvest for lettuce, lettuce was a slow, slow go uh, that winter. And you can see the same effects. Warm means two roof coverings. Cool means one roof covering. And look at the dramatic difference. Two plas plastics in the roof uh, with an inner cover of plastic, about 40 days uh, to second cutting. And you move all the way to the right to that blue bar. And you have cool, uh, no cover. And um, that's the worst of the performers. And that had almost 80 days, twice as much um, in over here uh, as in the other, meaning w double wall and plastic inner cover. So let's look at some numbers in terms of production. Um, here's the same sort of scenario. You look at the, uh, let's just take uh, Mizuna. If you have a hot or warm, which means two plastics on the roof with no cover, in terms of height, you have just under three inches of height right in here. When you move to the plastic inner cover, you have seven inches of growth. If you go down to the cool or single layer hoop house with no cover, two inches of growth and 6.5 inches of growth. What a dramatic difference in the production per square foot. The same holds true, true to the other um, Tatsoi and salad mix. So what does this mean in terms of management style, strategies and styles, in terms of what you might choose for inner covers? I often uh, get teased by my wife that I had to do something twice every day because I was a repenting dairy farmer growing up. And closing and opening the inner covers was just part of a routine that I enjoyed on the farm. So I could use a very extensive, heavy inner cover and open and close it every day to let the sunlight in. And, the, uh, and I was willing to put that labor into it for an increased amount of pro productivity. For other people, and Elliot Coleman and Barb are very, uh, as you may know, they do a lot of traveling. They uh, do a lot of other activities. And their choice is a different management strategy where they use a much lighter weight inner cover that does not need to be removed daily and closed daily, but only when you're working to plant, harvest, etc. It allows uh, something like an Ag-19 or something that allows air and uh, moisture and some sunlight to move through. I also, uh, when we moved away from heated greenhouses to high tunnels, uh, we were really concerned about transplant production. Over here on your, the, where you see me drawing that yellow highlighted, you can see that um, rolled back inner cover. And it fits right on top of the cold frame to your right. As you close it up, you can see the roll in the back. That inner cover did a double function of making actually three layers of protection for the transplants. And combining that with heat generated from compost allowed the production of transplants for our farm. Uh, we had multiple units of those. And we um, also did a different type of uh, bed production that didn't quite fit in under the inner covers, but was compost generated heat. You can also see in the foreground here where I'm coloring in some of those flats. Those were flats going in that key type bed where they, uh, you could tuck flats in and have a lot of transplant production in preparation for, uh, for field work. <coughs> 